embassy behind me, the embassy behind me, two years prior to the war, RSF shoots, USA gets paid. How many kids have you killed today? Because end of the day, they are making a literal killing every time someone shoots a civilian in Sudan. Every bullet that gets fired in Sudan, these people are doing metaphorical somersaults. They're ecstatic with joy every time that someone shoots because regardless of the outcome, regardless of whether it's SAF or the RSF doing the shooting, they make more money, they're pushing more weapons. The US military industrial complex is the main enemy. Not the embassy, not the American people, but the US military industrial complex. But yet, we are all fighting for the same goal. We demand a free Sudan! We demand a free Sudan! Be free! All Sudan will be free! All yourself, you will see! We chant you with genocide! 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 Peace and justice! It's difficult to get aid into. But even Med Medicine Sans Frontieres themselves have told us that many of the agencies have been slow to come back to places they've evacuated from early in the conflict. In the epicenter of massive disaster areas like Nyala and South Darfur, there are no other agencies with international staff on the ground apart from Medicine Sans Frontieres. So the cavalry isn't coming. No one is going to save Sudan. And once again, civilians are trying to save themselves whilst the world remains indifferent. I've learned to take solace from this spirit of revolution. I no longer want to appeal to Western sympathy. I do, however, want Western weapons out of my country. And I'd like to say to all the foreign players who are profiting from this war, hands off Sudan! Hands off Sudan! Hands off Sudan! Hi, my name's Tisneem, and currently there is a civil war going on in my country. Two different militias are being funded by non-Sudanese forces who are seeking to gain material benefit from our country. That's resources such as gold, etc. And as a result, multiple people are losing their lives. Millions are displaced. Millions are in threat of starvation and millions have been hurt. So one of the reasons why Sudan isn't getting as much coverage, to be honest, I feel is to do with racism. So there are a lot of conflicts happening in the world. But when we look at the media, conflicts, not just Sudan, but also Congo, where the victims are black are just not cared about as much and I just think that speaks to the wider racism in the global community where people only care about people that look like them and it's just assumed that Africans will fight each other. I think people should care about Sudan because one look into politics would allow people to understand that all of these conflicts, all of these genocides are interconnected and nobody can be free until all of these countries are free because the culprits are the same global forces that are seeking to benefit from neo-colonialism, not just in Sudan, but in Congo and in Palestine too. It's so easy for us to look back and say that colonialism was a disgusting act. We always say never again, but yet when neo-colonialism is happening every day, when corporations and governments are filling their pockets, and basing their economies off of blood, off of children dying, off of women being assaulted, then, then do we really stand against colonialism? What about when it's our own government? What about when it's our own prime minister sanctioning these things? Clearly nothing's changed. Clearly nobody cares about the global south. And I just think it's really sad. And my heart goes out to all the Sudanese people across the world who are suffering as a result of this war.